what up? It's your boy Dave B. Watch the Dave Beyond TV where we go beyond that everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day to day basis. And we got the moon sliding into Capricorn. You know what I'm saying? So big business. Big business. Moon and Capricorn, Sun and Scorpio. This is an opportunity to, you know, put some strategy behind what you're trying to structure for your life and things of that nature. Shut the fuck up, man. That little beat, man. Getting on my nerve. But anyway, it's a way for you to, uh, this opportunity for you to start to uh, lay some bricks down. So we talked about the moon of Sagittarius, how, you know, it was easy to get distracted just based upon the excitement from uh, Scorpio um, in the final final degrees mixed with that Sagittarius spontaneous energy wanting to switch things up maybe even wanting to escape certain things that you might as feel feel as though that's been going on for too long and you ready to get up out of so now um as the sun approaches uh Sagittarius we still want, we're gonna start to feel more enticed to um be free and want to expand on our comfortability for the most part we're gonna want to you know, this could be a time, depending on the type of spirit you are, that you want to either take it. This might be a time where you start to uh, cut corners. You know what I'm saying? You start to slack up on certain things that you was, um, you know, more solid on. Or for the, the other spirits, this, this could be a time where you actually see in more ways you can go hard. You actually kind of, um, you know, you would have took the energy. Say you were planting good seeds, you would have took the energy and you would have had enough of a breather within that energy because you was already planting good seeds. So you already should feel a bit free, especially from those those things that you might keep behind closed doors that nobody know about. See, if you planted the right seeds during the season, during Scorpio season, you don't have nothing to hide. So off the bat, you are in a space where you can be a lot more free and open about what it is you're involved in and what you're doing. It's not going to be no hard thought about, oh, wait, I think I need to do this in order to get more freedom in this space. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be no two-sided energy where you're trying to do one thing in order to get more freedom behind the scenes in another area. That would have been the bad seeds of this uh, Sun Scorpio uh, Moon Sagittarius energy. And so going into Capricorn, right? You're not going to have the same access or ability to, to handle your business like like you would if you was already handling, you know, say you was already being um open. And, you know, I don't know. I know during Scorpio season, it's like it's not about being a fool. You know what I'm saying? It's not about being foolish about that. Like I, when I say be open, I don't mean be a fool. I just mean, you know, being open in terms of understanding what it is you involved in or yeah, understanding what you involved in and not letting people make you feel no kind of way just because you, you, you know, you do what you do. You know, this is you being yourself. Like I said before, that new moon is in Scorpio should have been like, again, that your true self coming through to the point where, you know, you don't got nothing to prove. You, you, you already know who you are. So you already on that type of time where you like, yeah, this is who I am. You know what I'm saying? And everything behind closed doors is a representation of what I'm you know, uh, either who you are or again, transmutation and transformation to the point where you know what you, where you at in your process, you know, where you at in your journey, you know, you transforming. So if somebody trying to bring something up that you already on top of, you already know you, you adjusting and you fixing for your own life. Don't let somebody else come in your life and, you know, put their judgments on you, make you feel weird about what it is you got going on. Like, you know, that's kind of like the um the energy. It was like staying on, like, you know, saying staying on business in the sense of just, you know who you are. So you know what you got going on for you. Don't let nobody come into your life trying to, you know, force you no other way. You know what I'm saying? No kind of way. Put this shit up. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody come into your life trying to, like, you know, basically debo you or trick you out your position just because they feel as though they should go a different way. You know what I'm saying? Or they judging what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? They looking at what you're going through. They judging it. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're saying, oh, you should transform this. It's like we had to take power and control over our own path. That was what I put in the title. And that's, that's what it was. It's like we had to take power and control over our own path. Matter of fact, I, I want to go outside. Um, take power and control over our own path so that we can 
um, set this shit up for us, for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure we do this, this how we, we supposed to do it, not how other people think we should do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole thing about it. Like, you might have been in a space where others was telling you, you know, oh, like, you know, you should be doing this or you should be doing that. You might have felt guilty or something like that. And it, it would have threw you off. It would have had you in some kind of, you know, mode where you just doing what you think other people is going to approve of. You, you, you just doing what you think other people want you to do instead of doing what's true to you. And see, at that point, you know, you got the game fucked up because that's not that's not what the Scorpio energy is about. That's not what none of this energy is about. This energy is about you. And this is your path. This is your life. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think about that in terms of well, what am I trying to build for myself? You know what I'm saying? And see, that would have led you down the right path to um, to come to certain conclusions during the moon in, uh, in Sagittarius. And we still got a little time, I believe. I don't think it's, it's fully in Capricorn yet, but it would have led you to the right epiphanies and the right enlightenment and the right visions to be like, oh, okay, this is actually where I'm going towards. So, you know, it would have gave you enough breather, breathing room for you to expand and have that that freedom. But at the same time, it would have kept you on track and learning and, and, and willing to experience more about what it is you're trying to get deep on, what it is you're trying to transform. So as, along the process, because I like to look at this. The new moon in Scorpio, right? Whatever the new moon energy, that is the energy we are carrying throughout the whole cycle, the whole moon cycle. That's why I like to do things in terms of moon cycles, because it'd be a whole theme that we need to carry out for, for the totality from the new moon to the full moon. But from the full moon also right back to the next new moon. That's the completed cycle. You know what I'm saying? Some people like to stop right there at the full moon, but it's like you still didn't get the whole other half of that. That would be like the year ending in uh, in in what uh, Libra season. It's like, no, you got a whole other half, a, a whole below the horizon to take care of that is an accumulation based upon what you did during the, the above the horizon. You know what I'm saying? The, the first the first uh, signs to get to that, to the uh, the new the waxing period, basically. So getting back to what I was saying, the moon in Capricorn now. So again, this is, again, reacting and re responding to more serious energy. So we're taking our path a lot more serious. So if you was planting bad seeds with the moon in Sagittarius, you wouldn't have got enough freedom or you would have got a sense of false freedom, AKA escapism, you running away from your responsibilities to the point where now in Capricorn, you really stress, you extra stress, or you are extra serious to the point where it's like you you ain't even got no space for you to um uh, it's like every it's like you're super stressed at that point. You you're super serious to the point where you can't even um think straight. You know what I'm saying? Too much stress sometimes it it it, it takes away your ability to think straight. You know, that's why, like, even Mercury being exalted in, 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 um, in Capricorn, I mean, in uh, Virgo. Hold on real quick. I had to take a call, but, yeah, uh, Mercury being exalted in Virgo, uh, sometimes that's why, like, that's where the downfall is. Sometimes there's too much things on your mind to the point where you can't even focus on um, seeing things clearly or anything in reality. And that's the irony, you know what I'm saying? Virgos is correlated with reality as an earth sign, but being so much in their head, you start to lose touch of reality just the same way as a Pisces who's not focused on reality at all. You, you in so many details and thinking about so many things that got you stressed out, you don't even have a realistic uh, perspective on what's going on around you. Um, but that could be, you know, that could slightly be taking place at this moment in time, not to that extreme, but just because the moon and Capricorn got us responding and reacting to what's real in our life. You know what I'm saying? What's real reality. So it might be a little colder today, uh, tomorrow and the next day, um, especially with Scorpio there. It's real on the negative end, on the negative side. Here's what I will say. Be aware of people on that demon time. And I specifically mean about people who looking who are in desperation mode looking to looking to rob you out your like rob you out your draws like people at this time again because of capricorn that's what they're responding to so they're responding to what's real what they don't have maybe even material type things you know what i'm saying reality and maybe even the more harsh realities of what they're experiencing sun and scorpio are gonna make it look like behind the scenes it's gonna make it look sneaky it's gonna make it look like i can manipulate this situation and get what i need financially in order to 
do whatever I want. And it don't even got to be finances. It could be anything that a person looks at that they correlate to uh, achieving status. You know what I'm saying? Because that's really what it's going to be. It's going to be a, a status grab. You know, people won't be thinking like, oh, I can manipulate this situation to be seen better in this kind of light, to be known for this and stuff like that. So people will rob you right out of something. Uh, like I said, rob you right out of your drawers and shit like that. Just because of the energy and what's on their mind. Now, that's for the negative end. And again, that's only going to be a product of people who planted bad sees that to this point again even during Sagittarius uh the moon they they probably was goofing off or trying to escape and now they are desperate now they looking at their situation like damn no this shit really about to happen this shit really going down and and boom you know what i'm saying you look again you walking around blind not privy to the energy you could be the next victim you know what i'm saying so you know this ain't the victim channel this is the you know if anything we are the cause we're we not really affected you know what i'm saying if we affected by anything it's this stuff that we put in motion stuff like that but when it comes to, you know, on a positive end, how you can use this energy, this is good strategic energy to get you back organized with what it is that you're on a path to do. So like we were saying, like this is you taking power control over your new path. So this is the phase in which now you can apply some very good practicality to what you got going on. Some realistic uh you know, calculations to what you got going on, an opportunity for you to start to calculate, okay, how can I actually make my situation work for me? Um, this is good energy for you to get out of any, you know, again, you should have already been working yourself out of certain habits and patterns, but now it's like, okay, now, not only can you work yourself out of those patterns, now this is a way for you to strategically start putting um, actions into place. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you know, waxing period, that's when you got to put the energy in. That's when you got to put the work in. So, right now it's like this is like some good potent energy for you to actually start getting some things done you know what i'm saying try to be as productive as possible and do it off of your own passion and willpower not somebody else's resources because that's going to be the temptation the temptation is you might see opportunities to use or manipulate another person now here's the thing about using and manipulating when it comes to using see you're not supposed to necessarily use people but that's the thing we are here to it's like it's kind of like a balanced thing we're here to use and be used at the same time but your intention should never be to use somebody for their gifts and shit like that so it's like a balance you got to understand like what you can offer them as well um so that it's a mutual gain and you have to have a good strong intent see the thing about scorpio energy is that it's it's ulterior motives if your ulterior motive is positive meaning it's not it's it's beneficial to both parties you know what i'm saying you want to make sure your ulterior motives are clean and 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 something that can be leveraged on both ends aka let's say you are a uh music artist and you know a friend who is a videographer now y'all relationship could be mutual mutually beneficial because you give them something to make content with and they give you you, you, you give them something to make content with aka your song and they give you content for to push your brand you know what i'm saying they give you a music video so y'all could work together but see you have to be you have to be uh wise enough to discern whether or not the value is equal because sometimes like let's say they already a big name videographer and you somebody who just starting your music career it's not a fair trade for you to use them for their platform and their their skills and you don't have anything equally to leverage them so this is where you have to be the wise enough spirit to say okay well maybe i should pay them a, a, at least what i can in order to match the value you know what i'm saying that's the issue with a lot of um relationships and, and when it comes to like the scorpio end of things like you know investments and things of that nature sometimes the the value don't be equal on both ends and a lot of times this is where people get manipulated because again you might come up with an idea in your head be like well i'm not gonna tell them that um you know, I'm not going to tell them that I'm not going to pay them or what I'm going to pay them not really going to be enough. Um, I'm just going to get the video. And once I get the video, then you don't know, see now you got a now you got a negative ulterior motive where that's where that Scorpio energy comes back to bite you. You tried to sting them, but you end up stinging yourself because when it's all said and done and they looking at the results, either they're going to like again, there's many different things that could play out, of course, but not nine times out of 10, they're going to look at you and say, damn, you a snake. Like you, 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 you tried it. You know what I'm saying? You, 
really just trying to play me. And you know in your heart that you, what you was trying to do. You know, people be knowing what they be trying to do, even if they they try to shrug it off as though it's justified and things of that nature. It's like people know what they do. So sometimes you can't even really give grace all the time. You know, only time you can really give grace if you understand where somebody's heart was in the whole process, aka you understand why why they did what they did and even if you do understand too it, it's like you ain't always got to give grace you know what i'm saying giving grace is something it's it's a it's a privilege like you know what i'm saying like sometimes people don't deserve that especially people who um know damn well what they doing you know what i'm saying so and, and sometimes it's like we all know what we doing as spirits but it's a difference it's a difference a difference in energy it's like the type of shit you should give grace on is the type of shit where like a person wasn't trying to necessarily hurt you oh shit that shit hit me right in the eye bro I think it was like a, something i don't know what that was but um it's like give grace on certain things that that look like um it's like you give grace on things whereas a person wasn't trying to necessarily put you in a compromising position on purpose they wasn't trying to hurt you on purpose it was like they was just doing their own thing they was thinking to themselves and it might have been selfish and things of that nature but there might be certain things in there that you can pick apart and be like you know what i can give grace to that i can see where a person was when they when they made those decisions and even though you know it might have affected me they wasn't necessarily intentionally trying to hurt me the certain things you don't give grace to is people who's actually being uh oblivious to you you know what i'm saying people who are purposely doing things that and even if they are doing things that necessarily don't involve you it's like certain things that you don't have to give grace on and certain things it's like you know I guess certain things that put you in such a position that you now have to, uh, you know, things that, that truly damage you, you know what I'm saying? Things that actually put you in a position where you can't even, you can't even fathom why certain things was going down, why somebody would put you in that position. It's like certain things, it's, it, it, it come down to, to more than just what you can understand. Cause sometimes it's like, sometimes we be having, we be having to give grace on things we don't understand. But like I said, it's to each their own. Like you, you have to discern whether or not something is worth giving grace to, or whether you just going to stay, you know, put your foot down and be like, nah, because not everything warrants that you know what i'm saying not everything warrants that it's really a case-by-case -case basis i can't give you a blueprint on everything you should give grace on versus things you shouldn't it's, it's kind of dependent on the person you know what i'm saying and who you are and what you understand about life in in the world around you and what you can um sympathize with or empathize with in another individual um because there's some things that you know some things are just straight up unexcusable you know but what one person might deem is not excusable another person might be okay with you know what i'm saying and vice versa so that's why i don't, I don't want to give too many details on what to give grace to and whatnot it's really just something internally you got to feel for yourself to be like to determine like okay yeah that's something i'll give grace on but you know because some people is in a point in their life where you know i don't know what that was yeah a point in their life where it was you know what I'm saying it's not it's not no room to give grace you know some people in a, in a point in their life where it's like nah I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't got no, enough grace to give you know but getting back to what i was saying about this energy it's like this is like that prime easily you know easy uh energy that people can easily get into demon time you know people can easily just be trying to get over easily just be trying to get there so you got to be able to pinpoint that and keep yourself clean and on the positive end as far as what you can do within your own energy in order to keep the keep the things running is use this energy to strategize your own success um figure out your deep melt you know take your deep passions and motivations right but start to put some strategy to them start to actually plot out what it is that you want to manifest for yourself on a realistic end create a blueprint for yourself aka take that wisdom that you should have got from the moon and sagittarius now apply some structure to that wisdom take that wisdom and start to make it make sense start start to apply it you know what i'm saying you might have learned a lot of things during the moon and sagittarius right and even if you was just meditating in your own space and, and having visions and shit like that there's certain things that you was experiencing that you can now take and put into action and that's really what capricorn is about it's a cardinal sign so you got a cardinal sign and a fixed sign so this is being cardinal about certain things that you fixed on you know you're you acting on fixed energy so you staying on your deep passions but you're reacting to you, you you're initiating new ways to feel about what it is that you're passionately about and those new ways to feel is looking like things that you can utilize things that you can access as resources and when i say resources i mean like practical ideas practical um 
practical uh, practices and things of that nature, even when it comes to your feelings. Right now, emotionally, we don't need to be so emotionally reactive to everything. We need to be a little more cut and dry about what we're feeling. And we need to take those feelings and use them and construct them. Use them for something constructive. Use them for something productive. You know what I'm saying? And that, that looks like you not getting in your feelings about what you might not see around you. This is you. And, and, and see, that's that's the kicker people who are on the negative end they're going to be so emotional about what they don't have on the practical end that they're going to be willing to do things on demon time versus a person who understands where the energy is you're not so emotionally aroused or wrapped up into what you might not have resource wise or material wise so you are strong enough to actually take a creative idea and put the right thought into it to make it um work for you in a way to get what it is that you feel like you might not have at the moment so it's like that's the end you want to be on for as far as the, the good seeds. You want to take your, you know, you don't want to be so emotionally aroused to where you feel desperate. You want to feel emotionally grounded to the point where you can start to make grounded, practical, um, you know, productive moves towards actually going towards your passions and deep motivations and things of that nature. So now your desires don't have to be somebody else's burden. And that's really what I'm like, that's really the, the, the what I mean by, you know, when you are being a demon to other people or you being toxic, this is when you take your desires and you put them on the shoulders of another person. Your desires are your business. Your ability to obtain your, your desires and, and things of that nature, and, 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 and you know, th that's all you. The, nobody else responsible for satisfying your thirst or your hunger for a desire. And this is the number one, I think this is one of the biggest things that fuck up relationships as well. Individuals be putting their desires and their need to get certain desires on another individual when another individual not responsible for getting what it is that you need or getting what it is that you desire, I should say. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. In a relationship, you do want to have both individuals who is able to, you know, do things that make the other person happy. But... Your happiness can't be dependent on another person's another person. It just can't be, you know, otherwise you put another person in a you put another spirit in a compromising position because they have to take time from being themselves in order to satisfy you. And you are the only one who can truly satisfy you. So it's like in specifically desires, because desires are something that you actually can control. But some people forget that some people be so driven by their own desires that they lose themselves in the pursuit of them. You know what I'm saying? They lose themselves in that whole process and they become, again, a demon. Now you start to depend on other people to satisfy your needs. And it's like at the end of the day. You got to be the spirit who can discern what destroy, what desires, first of all, need to be destroyed in the first place versus what desires are ones that you can obtain in, on your own. And if you got people in your life that care about you and stuff like that, naturally, they're going to want to understand your desires and want to make you happy and, and, and do things like that. But that's a space that needs to be um, you, you want that space to be pure in the sense of a person wanting to do that for you not you demanding or expecting that from another person because that's when you start to become toxic that's when you start to become entitled and you stop appreciating certain things that you, you really do need to show appreciation for even though it's not about again it's not about doing things for the appreciation but you as the person receiving things from another individual should already be in a spirit to want to appreciate the other person because they didn't have to do that for you. You know what I'm saying? It's when you start to get entitled that you start to carry this nasty aura. And now people not going to want to do nothing for you because you walking around like you expect it or something is deserved. And even if something is deserved, because, again, a lot of people will argue and stuff like that and be like, well, that's stuff you're supposed to be doing. But it's like might be something that you're supposed to be doing, but that don't necessarily mean it's going to get done. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's OK to appreciate the little things. You know what I'm saying? I think just as much as people like the little things and the little details in their life, people should appreciate those things as well when another person goes out their way to do them because nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is promised. You know what I'm saying? But uh, aside from that, the moon is going to be trining. Um, it's going to be trining uh, Jupiter in Taurus. So this is um, give the gift to expand on our reality. And that's, again, having the knowledge and wisdom um, Either you're going to be this the gift to experience it or the um, gift to learn more about it and, and see in experiencing it. Cause see, that's the thing. You're going to be reacting and responding to cardinal earth. So the initiation of um, practicality 
but you're going to have the gift of what you were fixated on, what you value as far as wisdom and knowledge that you've been learning about regality. So that's a kind of a, a, a positive energy where you can take that and start to make, again, add, a, add on to some of these practical moves that you know you need to make. Um, the moon is also going to be uh, trying in Uranus. So the gift to feel like an individual when it comes to how you structure your life and how you gain resources. Now, if you don't, if you still don't feel like an individual when it comes to this, you still don't got your own thing going on, this might be a frustrating time for you. And you might feel instead of the gift to be unique, you're going to feel the, the gift to rebel. So you might rebel against certain things that you was getting you um, paid and things of that nature so be careful not to just quit a job just because you're out, uh, out of frustration or a temporary feeling make sure you're actually thinking through whatever decision you are making because you might say fuck this job i'm gonna just sell drugs and shit like that and it's like hold on dude you know what i'm saying you just had to let the energy pass and you would have had a better idea on what to do for money outside of just quitting the job and going right to something that could throw you in jail you feel me um you know what I'm saying, type shit. It could be the same thing with robbing and stealing. You know what I'm saying? You're like, why am I working this job when I could just steal? And it's like, nah, just take a minute. You know what I'm saying? You you in an extreme, right now, we're going to extreme. See, Scorpio energy is going to bring about extreme. Same thing as Sagittarius. And we right there getting closer to that cusp. So everything will feel like a extreme outburst. Everything going to feel like, oh, I need to go to the extreme with that. So when it comes to reacting to these practical matters, you're going to feel like, man, I can do the most extreme thing to get the bag. And it's like, nah, you should really stick to whatever's been working, what you've been seeing progress over time because all this shit is progression. So don't just jump the gun and, and have faith on the wrong thing. Make sure you're making practical moves. You know what I'm saying? It's like keep things practical at this time. Even though the Sagittarius energy is going to start to entice you, Moon is, I mean, Mercury and Sagittarius, everything on your mind going to feel extreme. Your thoughts going to be extreme and exaggerated. So you need to calm those down every now and then. Mercury don't belong in, <laughs> in Sagittarius. So you got to keep that in mind, too. So it's like the things on your mind not always going to be the proper th ways to go about it. So you can think and have the vision and have the picture and go long distance travel in your mind. But that don't mean that you need to act on those things right then and there. You need to kind of plot it out. Think about what it is, what everything is going to mean, the meaning and reasoning for certain actions and things of that nature, what the process is actually going to be about. That's what you need to be considering before you just jump into any and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, Mercury and uh, Chiron still trying it. So it's the gift to be thinking, either thinking and having mistakes on your mind. But you might think that mistake is a gift. So you might just be like, man, I I'm supposed to have just ultimate faith. Or this is going to be you wise enough to peep where certain thoughts might lead to a mistake. So take the time to actually see the gift of, oh, wait, I'm thinking of that. That might be a cool vision in my head. But in real life, that might be a mistake. You know what I'm saying? So keep that leverage. And then that's also going to be the moon in Capricorn Square, Aries, uh, Chiron, you know, learning the practical aspects of your mistakes, learning the the realistic aspects of your mistakes. And this could help you a little bit. You can learn a little bit more about what went wrong on a practical end when it comes to your mistakes, rather than just jumping into the first thing on your mind that you think is going to get you the bag. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how you want to use it. You don't want to use it the other way. Um, it's also going to be squaring the North Node. So learning what it's going to take on a practical end to get to your north node so this is good energy for plotting and planning plan out what you finna do as far as these next couple months you know what i'm saying going into um going into the death season you know or going into sagittarius season so you know so let's start to plan and plot out how we want to end our year you know what i'm saying both the gregorian year like the calendar year but also the real new year you know what i'm saying because we got till march or, or yeah we got till april right well, no, March. We got till March. So, you know, you want to kind of see how, how you want this year to end and start putting actions towards that. You know what I'm saying? What are the final things you need to let go of for the sake of fall? And what do you want to transform going into the death season for you to bring new life to come the new year? Again, like I said, this is year 2023. This is the numerology seven. So things are coming down to who you want to be, who you really are, your true self. So you want to you want to make sure you put motion into that. You want to put motion and action and passion into that. Like, OK, this is parts of who I want to be, not parts of what I think I can get out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? So think of uh, in terms of 
who I want to be, who I am, and what I want to be known for and, and seen for, rather than what I can just get at the moment, what I, what I can get out of this situation, what I can get out of that for me to feel satisfied and justified for who I think I am. It's like, no, you don't need to be thinking about who you think you are and doing things to suit that. You need to be who you are and do things that look like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the proper way to go about it, not the other way around. Because the other way around is going to look like manipulating, lying, cheating, stealing, all that bullshit that's going to come up to, to bite you, especially when um, Pluto goes into Aquarius. And that's another thing. The moon going to pass through Pluto in this later in, in, at the end of this. So that needs to be an emotional transformation. So everything that you're making as practical steps need to lead toward an emotional transformation that can take you into the next energy, right? And that's going to be Aquarius. And when, when the moon gets into Aquarius, the sun should be kind of on that cusp but it'll be a slight square so that square is what we need to learn in order to take advantage of the opportunity when the sun gets fully in Sagittarius so that's going to be like um that's going to be like learning how to associate our deep passions you know what I'm saying learning how to associate some of these things that we've been working on on a deep level these transformations how to uh, uh, how to associate our transformed self basically that's kind of going to be the energy and then if you do it the correct the, the right way like the right seeds this is going to be you having the opportunity to now expand who you are in in the light of other people and other people going to be able to recognize you for that and then boom now you now you on the way to that new path and things of that nature and then you know this is all leading to the full moon in uh Gemini, I believe, you know, full moon in Gemini. So this is going to be us needing to be satisfied with our social circle and our, our language, our things on our mind, our thoughts and feelings that we frequent, also our surroundings. So this is all to get us to a better surrounding for ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, aka around people who can support us and who can actually um, help us along our journey rather than take, it, take away and distract us, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be kind of the negative end. No matter what house you have it in, it's going to be the surroundings of that house, you know? So it could be the 12th house, but it's going to be the dreams and things of that nature or the people around you who support that dream and stuff like that. But we'll get into that when, when we get closer to that energy. But, um, yeah, moon going to be square. Like we talked about Chiron. We talked, yeah, moon square in the North Node. So, yeah, learning the practical aspects of what it's going to take to actually get there. You know what I'm saying? And again, use the moon and Capricorn to be hard on that shit. You know what I'm saying? To be to be solid on that shit and if you don't feel solid and comfortable about what it is that you got to get done i mean it's good that you don't feel comfortable you're not gonna feel comfortable with the moon and, and capricorn but it's like start to use that capricorn hard hardness to be solid on what it is that you got to do you know what i'm saying and, and take that on the chin be 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 a soldier on that end be a boss on that end that's really what it's about it's about being a boss so you got to conduct yourself like a boss at this time and with scorpio energy it's going it's going to be good you know what i'm saying but you want to be a, a, a good boss you don't want to be a shitty boss a boss who just lying cheating stealing and slimy you want to be a boss that's respected and when you doing things it's like people can see what you got going on and see that's that's goes back to what i was saying about ulterior motives when your ulterior motives are pure people respect you as a boss because you put people in position that's the that's the positive uh, capital energy you might be or, or a combination of uh, moon, moon and cap sun and scorpio this will be on a positive end it's a person who know how to use their energy to put others in position and you benefit by putting others in position because now they're in a position to come back and support you versus the negative end of this energy you tried to get over on a bunch of people so now you put people in a position to fail but when they figure that out and they end up succeeding in whatever they're doing they gonna shit on you you know what i'm saying so that you don't want to create enemies like that you don't want to create negative just karma like that you know what i'm saying and like i said karma is like your esoteric credit you know what i'm saying now you got bad credit in the esoteric realm so when you try to do things in the world people already go off the back gonna feel an aura and look at you like man you're not trustworthy i don't want to lend my eso my uh, intellectual property or my energy to you i don't want to lend my attention to you you know what i'm saying you wonder why people don't get no attention for what they do they might be doing the most amazing thing but they have bad Karm, they got bad credit in the esoteric realm, aka they karma bad. They done did a lot of things behind the scenes. They done did a lot of bullshit to people who didn't deserve it. Now they nobody want to give them the attention or accolades for what it is that they achieve. You know what I'm saying? That's some real shit. Um, yeah. What else? Moon is sextiling. Um, 
Saturn. So this is a opportunity for you to put your dreams in motion, for you to actually structure your dreams out and figure out what it is that you're even doing with these things. You know, Saturn is not direct. So take advantage of that energy to start putting things in place, putting things in motion. It's also going to be um, sextile and uh, Neptune. So this is an opportunity for you to see the realistic aspects of things you was lost in as a delusion or see what imaginations and creativity can be useful for whatever it is you're trying to build for yourself so that's the other end of that so you want to use your imagination use that sextile those opportunities to start to be like oh wait hold on this imagination can actually give me a thousand dollars let me put that into place this one can actually give me a million dollars this one can make me a billion if i just take the time to structure it that's all it takes um so we did aries uh wait no, pisces aries um with Taurus, we talked about Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, right? Nothing is Cancer, Leo, got little than Leo. So this is a misunderstanding. So misunderstanding, um, you know, again, your a little uh, embarrassment keeping you from handling your business. Don't let that happen, basically. Work out that misunderstanding, you know what I'm saying? Start, start to dry up anything that feels like, oh, I'm going to get embarrassed for this. The second you feel like I'm going to be embarrassed for this, that's the first thing you need to destroy. We've been, should have been done with that energy if you still let an embarrassment keep you from doing what you need to do you stop uh leo and then virgo we talked about virgo oh yeah um libra we got um square libra so venus in there we got moon square venus so learning what to value about reality but also learning what to value so when it comes to relationships and things of that nature it's like going back to what i was saying about using things and using people don't be using your you know Try not to try to make sure you're not abusing your relationship based upon what you can get from them. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure, it, it, and on a positive end, this is you and whoever or whatever you're relating to finding ways that y'all can be um, kind of like a power couple in the sense of like, because the thing about like Libra and Capricorn, they share Saturn. Saturn is exalted in Libra. So even though it's a square and it's sometimes a little rough, as far as the connection goes, they can understand each other. You know what I'm saying? It's just Libra is a lot more honed in on harmonious energy rather than Capricorn just being about the business. So this is you learning how to be more relatable about what it is you're trying to structure or your ability to handle business. You're you being learning how to be a little more relatable when it comes to the practical side of what you're trying to build for yourself. Or this could be you, um, you know, needing to be a little more structured about what or who you're relating to. You know what I'm saying? You might need to put certain restrictions on who you're relating to or what you're relating to in order for you to be more productive and, and, and get more out of your circumstance and things of that nature. So this is kind of like a balance day. You want to kind of see what spectrum you're on and um, use that to how you now when it comes to uh the libra and then we have um what's that the libra scorpio so we have mercury yeah mercury in, in sag and what else is it says mars mars is in scorpio though so this is a another opportunity so mars and capricorn are kind of like cool too because mars is exalted in capricorn so again opportunity for you to take your passions to the next level you know what i'm saying so you want to do that on a pure way you don't want to do that on a trying to step on somebody else's toes and debo somebody else out, out of their position you want to make sure your shit is secured and you're taking whatever it is that you do your passions and you're taking it to the next level to where others is going to want to be a part of that and so now it's not going to be a certain thing where you had to you know finesse somebody into doing what you need them to do they already gonna see what you've been working on and they're gonna be like damn i actually want to be a part of something great i want to be a part of what you do so take your shit to the next level you know what i'm saying so that's gonna be the opportunity to do that and that's that's all the energy for the most part so yeah um in other news you know what i'm saying we got the next each one teach one i'm dropping that shit today so be on the lookout for all that information to get signed up make sure you um fill out the um you know, you got to fill out the form, the form, I'll email you in response to that. And that'll let you know the next step to actually finish and complete your registration. So don't forget that. Fill out the form. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to have the link in the bottom of this video. Fill out the form to sign up. And then I'll email you to complete your registration. And we only have limited. We got only got this time. We we gonna kind of shoot for a 24 spot. So, you know, what I'm saying we got a little more spots, but not a whole lot. So, you know, what I'm saying first come first serve. Make sure you get in. 
uh complete the registration and then um yeah be on the look at yeah fill out the form be on the lookout for the email and then complete the registration and then you'll receive all your orientation forms so that we can get you started i can make your profile and then we we pop it um also the creators on vacation that's that's gonna be dropping on friday so uh i have all that information out you know what i'm saying we just gonna keep everything running like i said building this building this new world you know what i'm saying building this you know building this new world you already know what it is so uh much love and i'll catch you on the next one peace